Welcome back to the channel. In this video, we're gonna talk about taking better photos for your eBay listings faster. I'll also share with you my entire photography setup and workflow that produces excellent results for 99% of all products out there and allows me to list very quickly, less than four minutes per listing on average, including photos. I use this process to list and sell literally thousands of items on eBay every year across all categories. This is the video that I wish I had when I first started selling on eBay many, many years ago. So let's dig in. When thinking about how to take great photos for eBay, a lot of people assume that it requires a great camera which makes sense, but that's not the best way to think about it. Spending a ton of money on a nicer camera to get higher quality photos for eBay is most likely a waste. So if you're not happy with your photos today, I want you instead to think about how you define what makes a camera great. Great for eBay is different than great for, say, wedding photography. You see, a very important aspect of listing on eBay is workflow. Ideally, you want to spend the least amount of time listing and taking photos as possible because, as cliche as it sounds, time is money. And the more you can list in any given day, the more successful you will be as an eBay reseller. eBay rewards sellers who list frequently and consistently. I'm sure you've experienced this. You go many days or weeks without listing anything and also not selling anything, only to list four or five things in a row and suddenly start to get sales. This is eBay's algorithm responding to your activity. They give preference in search to listings from sellers who list frequently and consistently, so you want your listing and photo process to be easy and quick. And what camera you use plays a huge role role in being able to list faster. So the definition of a great camera for eBay is not just about what's going to give you the highest quality photos, but what is going to enable you to list as efficiently as possible while still taking great looking pictures of your products. This is why I use a smartphone for taking photos on eBay. Using a smartphone allows me to skip the arduous process of transferring photos from a standalone camera back to a computer so that I can upload them to a listing. With a smartphone, you can simply open up the eBay app and take and upload your photos directly directly to your listings, saving many additional steps required when using a standalone camera. In a few minutes, I'll walk you through my entire listing workflow, including how I take pictures so you can see what I mean in more detail. And you don't need to have the most modern smartphone on the market. If you have a phone that was built in like the last 10 years or so, you should have what you need to take good enough photos for eBay. So even if you have a standalone camera, I recommend you ditch it for eBay and use your phone instead. The one exception here is if you sell items that require special photography techniques that are difficult to achieve on a smartphone. For example, macro photography for small items like jewelry. Your smartphone camera's lens is likely insufficient and you will get a much better result from a camera with an interchangeable lens built for taking close-ups. So if the camera doesn't matter, what does matter? Lighting is by far the most important ingredient for taking good product photos for eBay. Good lighting will make almost any generic camera or smartphone take great looking pictures. Bad lighting, on the other hand, will make even the most expensive cameras take horrible looking pictures. And you do not need to spend a ton of money to get good quality lighting for eBay. In the very least, you wanna find a window. Sunlight is bright and free, but inconsistent, and means you can only list during certain parts of the day. So I recommend something a little less organic. I've tried many different lighting solutions over my years selling on eBay before settling on what I use now. Light boxes can be a cheap and easy way to take good looking product photos. You can find them on Amazon for as low as $20 shipped, and they give you a nice little box with white sides all around and lighting built in. However, they can be annoying to deal with if you're selling anything larger than like a toaster. If you're limited on space and typically only sell smaller items, this could be a good solution for you. Otherwise, you'll want a larger flat space that you can use to stage your product photos using a nice backdrop and an external light source. Ring lights can work well in a pinch, especially if you don't have a lot of room to work with. You can set them up next to your table and shoot photos directly directly through the ring so that items are well lit from all angles. However, I find that the light that comes from these to be pretty harsh and it can be difficult to take photos that don't create an annoying glare on items that are reflective. You also need to be careful using any type of LED or fluorescent lighting as certain smartphones and even some dedicated cameras with electronic shutters will produce an unsightly banding effect on your photos. My best recommendation if you have the space and a little extra cash is to buy a dedicated set of photography lights. I use these from Mount Dog, which I position on either side of my table. These will run you about $60 shipped on Amazon for everything, including the stands, and while they're not perfect, they are more than adequate for taking good product photos for eBay. I'll drop a link in the description below. Next, you want to make your photos 
photos clean. What do I mean by that? Well, search for pretty much anything on eBay and you're bound to find sellers who make zero effort to properly stage their photographs. They just toss whatever they're selling on their bed or their desk filled with other junk or even the trunk of their car. Yeah, don't do that. Some sellers think that eBay's algorithm gives preference to photos with a white background, but I'm not so sure that that matters all that much. I think a colored background works just as fine as long as it's clean and uncluttered and presents the product well. For example, let's say you're in the market to buy a Yeti mug. Which one of these do you think you're most likely to choose from when making a purchase? Look, I'm not saying yours won't sell if you just slap any old photo up there, but it will most likely take longer to sell, especially if what you're selling has competition. Remember, buyers are often choosing amongst many different competing listings when making a buying decision. You want to remove as many barriers to purchase as possible for your buyers, and not taking a few extra beats to properly stage your photos bumps your listing out of contention for many potential buyers. After all, if you can't make a small effort to take a decent photo, what's to say you're going to take the time to pack something for shipment without it breaking? It doesn't have to be perfect or professional grade, but make an effort to properly stage your photos on a clean background and that will mean you're at least remaining competitive. I prefer a white background because it's simple. I've tried a bunch of different solutions for white backgrounds before settling on what I have now, which is called a waterproof wall panel by a company called Plastex. I got it at Lowe's. It's basically a big bendable sheet of waterproof plastic and it comes in an 8 by 4 foot sheet that can be cut if necessary. I put it on my photo table and bend it upwards so that the curves create a clean, seamless background. I like it because it's got a matte finish, so it's not reflective, and it can be cleaned with a liquid spray super easily, unlike something made out of paper. Also, this is a pet peeve of mine. Keep body parts out of your photos, especially for used items. Let's not remind the potential buyer that it's been in close contact with other humans recently. Sometimes you see a finger or even a toe, and for some reason that just grosses me out, and I have to imagine I'm not alone. So keep your toes private. Next, you want to be careful using stock photography. Using stock photos can be compelling. You get a nice, high quality photo and you don't have to do anything, but they can be dangerous. You can get a Vero takedown for using copyrighted photos that are not your own. Some companies take this more seriously than others, though I have found it is not consistently enforced. If you get too many Vero takedowns from eBay, you run the risk of permanent suspension, so be careful. Also, stock photos are often associated with scammers because they don't actually have the product they're selling to take a picture of. And a lot of scammers are just too stupid, thankfully, to find a lower quality photo to make their scam look more legitimate. Also, people want to see what they are actually buying. If you're only showing a stock photo, the buyer is left to wonder what they are actually going to get if they make a purchase. And if what they get is in any way different from the stock photo, you risk getting an item not as described case open up against you. All that said, I do occasionally use stock photos even though there is some risk. When I do, I always include my own photos with it so that the buyer can see exactly what they are buying. I've yet to get a Vero from eBay for using stock photos, but if I do, I imagine I'll change my strategy here, and you probably should too, so be careful out there. All right, next, if you're just getting started with eBay or are looking to grow your existing eBay business significantly, this last tip is especially important. In previous videos, I've talked a lot about building scalable systems to help you grow your eBay business, and this definitely includes photography. Your goal is to make it trivial to list something new. If you have the room, build a dedicated space strictly for photography. It doesn't have to be huge, but if you have to set up a table and lighting every time you want to list something, you're less likely to actually do it. You want to remove as many roadblocks that stand in the way from getting your items live on eBay, so make it easy for yourself so you have fewer excuses. Have a dedicated space, make it neat and organized and ready to go so you can list without even thinking about it. Anyway, here's my listing and photography strategy and workflow. I break up the listing process into four phases. Research, listing details, photography, and inventory management. I list in batches. If I want to list five things, I pick five things to list and sit down and do the research for all five before moving them on to the second phase of filling out the listing details for each. Once the listing details are complete and I have drafts saved, I move on to the photography process for all five, and then finally finish them all with inventory management and storage. I typically list five things in about 15 to 20 minutes or between three and four minutes per item. I do all of my research and fill out listing details on a desktop computer because it's faster for me to do this part with a keyboard and mouse. 
else. Also, I'm old and I prefer that over using my phone. You should do what you're most comfortable with. Once I have drafts saved for each listing, I grab my phone to take pictures for each. I make one final review of the listing details and then I publish the listing directly from my phone. This is why my smartphone is the best camera for eBay. No need to transfer images. I can upload directly from the phone and I can list immediately. It saves a bunch of extra steps and time and the pictures are more than adequate. Once everything is listed, I place each item onto a shelf or bin and hop back over to my inventory management system and input my acquisition data like how much I paid for each item and where I bought it from along with where in my inventory it's stored and that's it. So what does your eBay photo strategy look like? Do you have any tips or tricks for taking better photos or speeding up the listing process that I didn't mention here? Let us know in the comments and thank you for watching. Thank you.